I am Paul Vixie, and uh, the only reason anybody at Black Hat would ever have heard of me is that I invented the first RBL. So the thing that we use to block each other's email uh, and, and that has made email so unreliable for all of us was invented in my shop um, originally to fight spam. As you can tell, I lost. Um, but that company was called MAPS, M-A-P-S, that's spam spelled backward, the mail abuse prevention system. We sold that years ago to Trend Micro and they are doing what they can with it, but I'm still getting a lot of spam and so I've, I view it as a failure. Anyway, the thing that I'm going to talk about really briefly before Robert gets on to talking about what's on the schedule is uh, kind of an update to the original RBL, except um, it's totally different. Uh, anyway, so we have more time than we originally expected to have. Um, that does not mean that I'm going to drone on loquaciously and waste everybody's time. If we can get out of here, then we should, uh, I'm sure there are more, more fun things to do than to listen to the sound of my voice. Uh, nevertheless, we will probably be more interested in questions than we thought we were going to have time for. So uh, don't be shy, uh, and please don't be bored. So, um, very briefly, and then as I said, we're going to let Robert talk about what we're actually here to talk about. Um, my company, Internet Systems Consortium, uh, you can think of them as the bind people, because the, the bind software comes from us, is about to release some patches to bind that are going to allow us to start blocking domain resolution on a subscription basis. Actually, we won't block anything, but uh, people who run Bind will be able to subscribe to a reputation feed. And um, so that instead of just either take, getting it for free or paying somebody for a list of mail servers that you shouldn't take mail from if you don't want spam, it's, gonna, it's about to become possible to subscribe your recursive name server to a feed that says, uh, gee, if that just appeared in a phishing attack somewhere, and I cannot possibly protect my users from clicking on it because they are, after all, slightly evolved monkeys and they will click on anything that moves. Here's a way to make sure that it doesn't work when they try it. Um, anyway, uh, we have some slides, most of which are uh, kind of hard to get through. Um, huh. it, it, uh, oh, it just takes time. Rendered, uh, this yeah. is real-time rendering. Uh, I, have ne I have not done slides based on LaTeX in many years. So um, for those of you not DNS experts, um, I'll go through this extremely quickly. Um, a caching resolver, and it really isn't spelled C-A-S-H, that uh, we need a proofreader. Uh, caching resolver, in order to look up a website name like www.isc.org, would really have to surf the hierarchy. Uh, you go up to the root and you ask them the whole question. They say, well, go ask the .org servers. You ask them the whole question. They say, go ask the .isc.org servers. You ask them the whole question. They will finally give you an answer. Uh, and that's called iteration. Happens uh, billions of times a day. Um, it's, uh, that's, that's how DNS works. Uh, it's amazing that it works at all, given how many extra round trips and things there are. But, but it does sort of work. Um, what we do is uh, somewhat interruptive of the normal process. Uh, we've got this mechanism of transferring this reputation data into that uh, caching resolver. And after you do that, uh, stuff doesn't work anymore. Um, if, and in this slide, we're using XYZ badness, but really you want to imagine this is the name of your bank with an extra hyphen in it or something else that would normally appear in spam or uh, on some drive-by website uh, pop-up ad or something like that. Um, and uh, when the end user tries to look that up, then they, uh, the, instead of it going and surfing the hierarchy, it immediately discovers that that's in the reputation policy zone that's been subscribed to and you get back something else. What you get back instead of the right answer, uh, where the right answer would be some server that would infect your computer, uh, what you get back instead of that is either uh, 
uh, an indication of non-existence, a so-called NX domain, or it could be a pointer to um, a walled garden where you give your user a pop-up message and say, uh, you are an idiot and here's how you clean up your PC. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the local policies will be, but I don't care. We're providing the mechanism. How you uh, operationalize that is, is entirely your own affair. Um, so we're at the end of these slides, which is good because they're terrible. Uh, this will be, um, I guess you should feel like you uh, won the lottery because uh, today, right now, this moment is the public announcement. Uh, and you can say later that you were here. I have a history, I've been doing this, um, I don't know, decades, of creating multi-billion dollar industries and then making no money from them. Um, and so I was running a little low and I decided that it was time to start another one. So you can really expect that this is going to take off pretty well. Uh, Google and OpenDNS and some other people are now doing recursive DNS sort of in the cloud as a way to provide this type of protection, uh, among other things. Um, so we are going to move the ability to put this kind of protection back into the enterprise, back into the LAN segments. Um, I'm going to make it possible for uh, all of the people who know where the bad domains are and know when they come and when they go and can provide you a, a vibrant real-time feed of them uh, to start selling that information to interested interested parties. None of it's proprietary. Nothing ISC has ever done has been proprietary. Uh, it's, uh, that's a long story there. So we're going to be publishing the patches soon, probably a day or two. Look at our website, www.isc.org, probably after the weekend if you want to look at the patches and install them. They'll be in a mainstream version of Bind uh, probably in a month or two, uh, just because it uh, there, there isn't a train leaving the station right now, so it's going to take, uh, we have to wait for the next one. Um, we have spoken to some content providers. I know that uh, Spam House has agreed to make their so-called RHSBL available in this format uh, for their subscribers. Uh, I know that uh, various ISPs are testing this as a way to deliver reputation data from their NOC to their recursive servers in order to start doing a little bit of e-crime e prevention, uh, sort of on the hoof. Um, I know that VeriSign is testing this in their labs. Uh, I, I can only imagine that if uh, somebody is, if Symantec or somebody is paying them a billion dollars for their old X509 business that they're going to need to do some new lines of business, so hopefully this will be one of those. Um, we're talking to a number of other reputation providers. I don't have permission to give you the other names of people I'm talking about, but uh, the value proposition has been well received is what I'm trying to, to describe. So uh, by this time next year, you can expect your DNS resolution to be as flaky as your email reception is today, and you'll have me to thank for it. So. I wanted to uh, preempt Robert's talk about Cassandra and passive DNS by sort of using this microphone to make the, the first announcement. Um, I would have time for a demo if Robert uh, has time at the end of, of, of his, uh, just to show anybody who's interested, but uh, based on how empty this room is, I'm not sure how much interest there's going to be there. Any questions on this before we move into the thing that is actually written down in the program as the reason some of you might be here, uh, that being passive DNS? Please ask me a question. I'm, this is, it's hard speaking to a mostly empty room. Somebody, raise your hand. There you go. Louder? How does it affect load time? Um, from uh, something small to infinity? <laughs> so, um, load time for, let's say, a web page for a browser that is behind one of the recursive name servers that's going to subscribe to this protocol or to, to this, this policy zone uh, doesn't really change. Um, the important metric for a name server is how many queries per second it can answer. Um, and there's usually a couple of different ways to measure that, like if my answer is already in cache, 
then how fast can you answer? Versus if the answer isn't in cache and you have to go surfing around the internet looking for it and getting punted from the root to, to org, to ISC org, and so forth, as in that slide. So cache hit performance is one metric, cache miss performance is another metric. We have not been able to measure a difference uh, in queries per second on cache misses. In other words, the network time is what dominates that particular performance benchmark. Uh, you know, how long does it take you to get to other people's name servers to get the data you didn't have in cache? We have been able to measure a small difference in performance on the uh, cache hit time. So, uh, for example, if you have a name server that's doing this, you know, if you stress test it and it's doing 50,000 cache hits per second now, it might lose as much as 2% as a result of having a policy zone loaded that's got a million names in it, where a million is hopefully going to be a large number. Um, in the back? No, you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the question is, are we implementing a blacklist in the recursive name server? And the answer is yes. So the, so the problem is, have you looked at the lifespan of the recursive name server? Because the blacklist sure. Uh, the question is, have we looked at the comparison of the lifespan of bad domain names to the uh, cycle time of updates to a policy zone of this kind? Uh, yes, of course we have. Um, my early exposure to the IETF, which is where DNS protocols come from, uh, was to sort of participate in the incremental zone transfer protocol, the dynamic update protocol, and the real-time change notification protocol. Uh, that was IN and D, DNS IND was the name of the working group at that time. If you turn all of that crap on, you can get end-to-end -end cycle times of, I put the update in here when I became aware of something evil, and it was in all of my secondary servers within five seconds, even if all of my secondary servers are potentially, there could be 500 of them and they have, they're on every continent. Now you have to use aggressive timers and you have to really sort of push the limits to get that. And five seconds is kind of absurdly low anyway, but the fact is it can be done. If you push only a little and you say, I'm, I can tolerate up to a minute uh, and I'm going to have, you know, potentially 10,000 customers subscribing to this and I will use a rack of machines if, I, if necessary to feed more than that, um, then it's, you're, it's easy. It's like falling off a log. So the answer to the question, what's, this, what's the lifetime of a malicious domain name? Um, you can measure it without affecting it, or you can measure it sort of in the quantum physics sense of how does the measurer affect the measurement. And it turns out that the, uh, the real lifetime of a malicious domain name is until it stops working. So I'm creating an industry here that is designed to bring that time in a little bit because I'm going to make it stop working a lot sooner. And that'll mean that we have a lot of churn, right? Because bad guys will continuously have to come up with new domain names to continue doing their e-crime. And we will continue, you know, continuously, not, we won't, I'm not going to publish anything. I got sued enough when I did maps. We're not publishing anything except the patches. Other people will make the content, but content publishers antivirus companies, spam house, people like that, will continue to publish reputation data about these new domain names to say, hey, this one's bad, it shouldn't work. And to the extent people subscribe, they won't work. And once they don't work, people are going to stop using them. And as soon as they're not being used anymore, it might make sense to pull them out of the feed so that you have got don't have this sort of elasticity to it where you're ballooning up past, you know, million upon million of bad domain name. You'd like to pull them as soon as they're no longer in use. Um, and high churn of addition and deletion works just fine in the modern DNS protocol. So the answer to your question is yes, we have looked at, at that uh, in, in detail. I had a question here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes. Um, this happened.